guys, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden, and tonight I'm bringing you along for the story of my Dahlia disaster to delight this year. Let me preface, this video has been taken over several months, and we're going to start back at how I found my Dahlia tubers earlier this summer. Hey, hey, garden gals and guys, it's Steph with Tiny's Garden, gardening from my garage with the pouring thunderstorm outside checking my dahlias finally i garden in zone 5b slash 6a in the chicago suburbs if you're new here welcome i'd love for you to subscribe and follow along so for those of you who follow me you know i have not checked my dahlia tubers yet and we are getting to crunch time for these babies to be born i am definitely slowing down and uh, it'll be 32 weeks on Monday. So I'm trying to get everything done. The sad news is I just opened my first box and we're looking, what's the word? It's not looking good. Let me show you. So first of all, you can't see it now, but the first thing I did was open it and a bunch of flies flew out, like natty flies. And then I pulled this first tuber out, which happens to be one of my favorites, Bella Barmira. I just stored them in clumps and look at that. Rot city. Oh yeah, not good my friends, not good. So I'm gonna go through this box some more with you, but I'm feeling like it's probably not gonna be much different with everything else. And of course I have two more full size bins like this, which are probably not any better. That's a bummer, but I guess I'm shopping for Dahlia tubers tonight. But I hope I find at least a couple that are okay because this is a lot of tubers, at least 30, that would not have made it. I don't know why I can't get Dahlia storage down. I've just never had great luck. At least last year I had like seven to 10 and then the rest were ratty and I kept them in like little plastic trays with vermiculite. These I tried the shavings this year, like the animal bedding shavings, and kept them in my garage in clumps. I guess I'm not doing that again. Now you can see some of those flies and gnats. This is the next one I pulled out. Oh my gosh. Trash. I've killed all of my dahlia tubers. Yep. I don't think I'm even going to go through anymore, y'all. I mean, it's just mush in there. Yeah, this is... I'm not going to breathe this in. Ah! So then I put up a short saying, help, all my dahlias have rotted, what places still have tubers, etc. And I was coming to the end of my twin pregnancy. So you can imagine there was a lot going on, but I ordered a bunch. And here's what I ended up with. A bunch of orders from different flower farms across the US of A and they all arrived in good condition. So here is my stock and here's how I planted. Hey, hey, garden gals and guys, it's now May 15th and I wanted to show you in the light. I did get this dahlia bed planted and so I wanted you to show you what the finished product looked like and also I'm finishing up on this side today and so I can show you in the light kind of my process. So this side is all in planted with the post behind them. You can see those nice 12 inch stakes. That's why I love those. Cause you can clearly see the variety name on them. All these are in the ground. Everything is set over here. So now I just placed these like I wanted them. I've got my stakes ready to go. In these raised beds, I really want tall ones. So I tried to look up some that I wasn't sure how tall they were and keep the smaller ones for pots and the taller ones in here because they really need that support and all of that dirt. So let me bring you up close and show you what I do. And just as your reminder for depth, I'm going about four to six inches, airing on the side of six down. There's the bone meal. And there's the little eye right in the center there. Tuber facing on its side and covering it up. Again, these beds are seven and a half feet long by four feet wide. So I believe I fit 16 in here. What I do is I come down and today I've spaced out the tubers. That sweet Natalie is gonna go here. I take my 12 inch stake. I go like this, I put the next tuber there so the stake acts as my measuring stick and the next stake 
matches with the tuber that I put here. Same thing. Oh, old tulip. Uh-oh, it's really caught on there. Anyways, measure it out. Next one there. So you can see 12 inch spacing and I'm making sure I'm labeling in front. So now all I have to do is come in, pull back the dirt, put in the bone meal, put in the tuber on its side, eye up, cover it up and push the stake down in the back. I'm gonna do that very quickly, hopefully. And I'll show you what it looks like at the end. All right, I got all of them in the raised beds. Let's take a look. Looking good. The 16 I told you I was gonna get in here. They're all in with labels and posts. And it went pretty well. All my tubers seem viable. So I'm really happy with that. So between this bed that has 17 in it and this one over here that has 16 all my dahlias are in the raised bed that's 33 between this bed and that one so later this evening i'll probably give these a little drink of water on both beds because i'm going to do all my raised beds because it hasn't i haven't watered anything since yesterday so i want everything to get a little bit of a good drink do be diligent about how much water you're giving your dahlias. If it was going to rain in the morning tomorrow, I wouldn't even worry about it. You don't want to give them too much water because then they could rot. But I'll just give them a little sprinkling, a little moisture. Um, not like I'll do my other buds. My other buds, I'll make sure they get a really nice good drink. These I'll just give a little moisture because, again, definitely don't want to have these rot. Too much rain or moisture in the beginning not good for dahlias. Also, like I said, it's May 15th. All my dahlias are in the raised beds for cutting. That's what I want. Like I said, I'll get some of these in um, pots, but that's separate. I have gone as long as July without planting. Last year, I think one of these beds I had to plant in July just because that's how life was. And I still got some blooms. So if you're not there yet, don't worry about it. But I would definitely put that on your priority list to get them in sooner than later because they definitely perform at their best getting started a little earlier. If you haven't, put it on your list, but don't freak out. So that'll be it for this video, but that's a huge check mark off my list for getting these in before the babies come and having it set for summer now. These beds are good to go for the rest of the season. Again, I did what's called turning and burning or flipping the beds from a cool crop like tulips that I use for cutting my cut tulip to dahlias and it works really well for me every year. I'm happy with what we have here. Is it as good as last year? Oh, probably not, but I still got some beauties and even some new favorites. So now I'm gonna take you through this. And for your reference, my raised beds are seven and a half feet long by four feet wide, and there is drip already installed in the beds. For what it's worth, I don't think it's necessary to actually have drip installed in dahlia beds because they can so easily rot with too much moisture and they do pretty well for a good amount of time before they need water again but i digress i have it in anyways because i'm actually going to change up the formation of where i plant things next year and rotate my crops so i have them set up in all the beds so i'm good to go so this front dahlia bed here i always have the best luck with this one I think it's because it gets the most sun as opposed to the one that is directly behind it. It's a little less sun, so it's never quite as full, but I've got some beauties in this one. So let's take a look. This is one of my favorites. It is called Joey Linda, and I have never grown it before. It is like a coral color. I'd say a little more orange than it's showing up on camera but so, so good. So tall and floriferous. I mean, there's blooms coming out of this thing's everything. They're so gorgeous all the way around. Look at all those that are ready just off of this one 
plant. Now when we're harvesting, this is a Joey Linda and on the right side, it is not quite open in the center. That is what we want. This one over to the left, you can actually see the yellow on the inside. That's, I mean, this is the last stage that I would pick this and give it to somebody because it's not gonna last a super long time in the base, but the one on the right is gonna last longer than the one on the left. This is not gonna open that much more. Any dahlia doesn't typically open much more than the stage when it's picked in, but I do try and pick them before that center opens. Remember, if you have to sacrifice some blooms by cutting deep into your plant, it is okay. You will get more long stems and more blooms by doing it that way. Okay, we're getting darker here, so I'm really gonna hustle, but this is Joey Linda, up close and personal. It's a really beautiful peachy orange, and then it does get a little tint of yellow by the end as it ages. But so good, so floriferous, a stunner. So she's on my list for next year. If I can manage to save these tubers, and if not, I'm just gonna buy one for insurance. Now this is Wynn's new pastel, a really, really soft yellow with striations of pink in there. And this is not one of my favorites, but I think a lot of people would love it because of its pastel color. Now, though it doesn't look like much, this little one here is actually my favorite. I've been cutting off of this like crazy and have already used it in a bouquet. Which is why there's only this little one available but it's my favorite of the whole year. I'm gonna put footage on the screen of it in previous days. It is Sandia Summertime. I even made a short about it. Why is no one talking about her? She is so beautiful. Is your jaw dropping? Cause it should be. An anemone type dahlia with a really poofy yellow center and these soft white slash cream petals on the outside. Just so gorgeous, pops in a bouquet, has tons of flowers on the stem, really easy to grow. I'm hustling now, because these are the last two I want you to be able to see in the light. We have American Beauty here, which you can see how many flowers are on her. I haven't cut off of her in a little while, but man, she produces a lot of long stems, beautiful flower. This is obviously too late to cut it, but, just imagine when she's in her prime. Speaking of, this one here is excellent. Let me get these other buds off. Yes, gorgeous. The size of my whole hand, a really pure deep red. And I think it's called American Beauty because if you look on the back, there are some white striations under there. So it's kind of like the American flag in a way. Oh, the size of my face. There you can kind of see those white striations better. It's a really nice, simple detail on there. Oh, pretty, pretty. And then we have Bracken Sarah back here, a new one for me this year. What? Oh, I looked this up on Florette before I decided to buy it. I forget what flower farm I bought it from. I bought all of these tubers from different flower farmers. And she said it was one of their most beautiful on the farm. And I actually see why. Besides the fact that it's huge, it's got beautiful coloring, a little more pigmented than the Wind's New Pastel and a little more peachy, I would say. But oh, she pretty. Two more I wanna to touch on, the next one being Ferncliff Spice. And this one, I was really curious what it was gonna look like in person and I'm not disappointed. So here we have Ferncliff Spice. Now I know there's a lot of open centers, you wanna pick them before that, but this is a good example here. These two right here are the true colors. It's like a mauvey purple and light yellow, a ball dahlia, I would say, and on the smaller side, but really fun to punch in some bouquets and a unique 
color palette. Yeah, when they're picked at the appropriate stage, whoops, really pretty fun dahlia. Then we have Temptist, and I'll show her in the light to you too. Okay, so I want to show you the difference between Cornell, which is a true red, and then this is Temptist. So you can see there definitely is a difference. I guess it is more corally, if that's the word. There's a little more orange in it. So here's a good comparison of the type of red that Tempus is. I like it. I haven't heard a lot about it, but I really do enjoy it. And I'm fitting one more in there, La Luna. This big kahuna, that rhymes and I didn't mean to. I will show you this one in the light. It is a dinner plate dahlia that I ordered last minute and it really is a neat, unique color palette. It's almost like an electric yellow with white, intermixed together, kind of glows in the dark in a way, but not an obnoxious yellow. So it's very pretty. See, she kind of glows in the dark, right? Oh, so fun. And this is Cafe Olay that I caught on a different day and wanted to throw in this video because she's so stunning. This is by far the best year for my Cafe Olays. Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh, okay, we are in. Okay, I'm back inside. I finished harvesting a bunch of flowers. We are going out of town this weekend, so I wanna throw some bouquets together and give them out so they are not wasted blooms. And as you can see, I have lisianthus, some zinnias, and then of course the dahlias that I shared with you. So that is how this year's dahlia season has gone from disaster to some very pleasant, delightful dahlias. So I hope that was helpful, encouraging you to try growing dahlias and how to pivot if you need to and try again if disaster strikes with storage. I gotta figure out how to store these dahlias. Comment below, let me know your best dahlia storage method. If you're able to overwinter them in cooler zones, then you can have a whole stock of dahlias for the next year without having to buy new tubers. So obviously that's the route I prefer to go, but I will always grow these queens. I call them the queens of the garden and I think you can see why. Remember to subscribe if you haven't to follow along with all things garden here in my home home garden in zone 5b slash 6a. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel. Thank you all for your support. We'll see you in the next one. Happy planting. P.S. Don't you love my little flower girl up here? Hey girl. Got her at an estate sale. Great find. Anyway, okay. See you in the next one. Bye.